Well, it's finally time to start bringing in some of the major components. And to start off, I've got an Intel Core i9 13900K. I strongly considered getting the 14900K, but this was just slightly cheaper for almost exactly the same performance. And after just looking through some of the numbers, this ended up being the better value, so that's why I chose it. And with the uh, regular K, you get the uh, onboard GPU, so that can at least get the computer running for now until I have a graphics card to really get the performance up to what I really want it to be. Let's start off. Just go ahead and open this thing up. See what we've got here. Of course, I'm sure many of you have seen this before. But it comes in some pretty nice packaging. Got this really shiny chrome um, chip housing for the CPU. That just twists off. And then there's the CPU inside. CPU. Looks like a CPU. And that's all I have to say about that. And there are other reasons why I chose this processor too. I was reading for months about the different performance advantages and disadvantages of each one. I was considering strongly the AMD CPUs because they've got some really good ones. Those new X3D CPUs, those are especially good for gaming. And if this was purely going to be a gaming computer, I would have chosen one of those because they're faster and more efficient for that application. But this is more than just a gaming computer. This is going to be my all-around production computer, which I'll use for not just video editing and gaming, but also um, different um, 3D design and other work that I like to do on it. So I want something that was going to be a good all-around CPU that would last me for a long time in all applications and not just be focused towards some specific ones. And I think that for the value, this is going to give me about the best of everything that I'm wanting. Now, of course, if you want to drive a high-end CPU to its fullest, you need a really good motherboard. And thanks to a Cyber Monday deal that came along, I managed to get this MSI Meg Z690 Ace motherboard for $300 off of its original retail price. So that was about $250 for this board, which is not bad at all. Now, some of you might be wondering why I didn't choose a Z790. Well, again, I was looking through reviews of just the advantages, disadvantages of each chipset. And the Z790, although it handles memory better with a little bit higher speed for overclocking, um, these 690 boards with updated BIOS, they actually run the 13900K CPUs just as fast in testing from all that I've read, all that I've seen, the tests that different people have done. So I don't really do much overclocking myself and the uh, different megahertz of RAM that I've seen for the extra cost for the top end that the 790s can support. It just really wasn't going to be worth it to me, so I settled on the 690. And I think I'm going to be glad that I did too, because this board is just insane. I never thought that I would buy a motherboard of this level. I've always stuck to ones that are pretty much just base models. Like, uh, I think the most expensive motherboard I've ever purchased for myself was around $100, and that's it. And not this time. This time, I've got the all-out, everything I could ever want, and more motherboard with every slot and connection in every place that I could ever need. It has tons of fan connectors all around. Um, it has the whole uh, really good stable um, CPU VRM power system with these really large heat sinks for cooling all around. It's just not, and it's not just on the front either. They also have this backplate on here with additional 
VRM backplate cooling. And then this whole thing acts as a heat spreader. It's not just for strengthening the board. So they really, really put everything into this. It's got um, five M.2 slots, although one of them is shared with the SATA ports. So I think I'll only use four of these and then the rest I'll leave open to ports for regular mass storage hard drives through the rest of the computer. And this should also have a really good audio chipset in it, so I don't think I'll need a sound card, which I've always used in the past with my other motherboards, just because their sound quality wasn't quite up to what I was wanting. They would either just somehow feel flat on my ears when listening through headphones, where a good sound card kind of rounds it out somehow. It's kind of hard to explain if you've never really heard or felt the difference before, but there is a difference, so I'm hoping that this is a really good sound chipset in here. And then of course it's also got all the different lighting functions. You can have both the 12 volt RGB as well as the 5 volt ARGB, which is what I'm going to be using with my Alpha Cool fans and probably some other um, RGB products that will end up in there eventually, just so I can match everything. And yeah, also just uh, every connection I could ever want with the USB-C connectors here, as well as the other USB 2.0, 3.0 headers on the side. Got tons of connections. These are all um, USB 3.2, I believe it is. It also has Wi-Fi, although I'll probably not use that just because I'm gonna have this hardwired with my router, which is about um, five feet on the other side of my desk, so not much need for that. Just put a cable in and that'll be the most reliable. But it's nice to have that there. And all the different audio connections, two different Ethernet ports. Yeah, really, there's uh, nothing bad to say about this board, I don't think. They even <laughs> put actual gold plating on certain parts just to shine it up that much more. And one more thing that could actually almost be considered a feature is that the board itself has no built-in RGB lights. Pretty much all gaming motherboards now have RGB lights built in. Even the cheapest of cheap boards will have that. This one has none of that. So you can have a totally dark board in the system and yet it still really look really looks nice with all the lights and the rest of the computer reflecting off that gold. And then of course on top of all that the board itself has just really good quality construction. It's thicker than your normal motherboard material with heavier copper. The heat sinks are extremely heavy and I actually weighed this thing real quick off camera and the board itself is about four and a half pounds. So that's about four times heavier than any other motherboard I've ever owned, which is just crazy. This is quite the motherboard. So I'm excited to try it out, if you can't already tell. And yeah, one more thing about it, it's the uh, EATX design. Not true EATX, which is really kind of a server-only thing for the most part, which would be a 12 inch by 13 inch motherboard. So this is about two and a half inches undersized for being true EATX. But this, still, but this is still extended about an inch more than your standard ATX motherboard. So it's very large and it should also look very good inside of that huge thermal tape case. So with all that said, let's get to actually putting some things together. Step one, insert CPU. Flips that way. And let's see, line up the different notches. Make sure it's dropped in correctly. Put that back down. Snap that out of there. And there it is. Some of you who are watching closely may have noticed that I didn't get the CPU set in there properly. The clip was not holding the plate down, and I have fixed that, so that's all good now. Oh, and as for all these different plastic films on here, 
I'm going to wait until I actually have this installed in the computer to peel those off because I just don't want to get tons of fingerprints all over these parts while I'm putting it together. And now with the CPU in there, I decided the next thing I wanted to add in was some RAM. So after doing some review reading and looking for priced performance and all that, I decided on this um, Thor DDR5 RAM from Lexar. So that's a 32 gigabyte kit here, two times 16. With the 6,000 megahertz maximum overclocked speed, I believe is what that is for. And the latency on this is 32, so not quite the fastest DDR5 around, but certainly not the slowest either. This should do some good work for me. Let's see, just get that open. Okay. Had to cut some tape open on that flap. Okay, there it is. That's some pretty nice looking stuff. I think that'll actually I think that'll actually be a pretty good match for the look of the motherboard with the gold trim all around there. So this has some kind of nice looking gold striping around it. It's not real gold like they used on the motherboard, but still looks nice, I think. So recommended slots are two and four. So we'll just uh, go ahead and open those up. Slide that down in, making sure everything is aligned. Get that a good push, it snaps in nicely. There's the other one. All right, so there's that installed. So just a couple more things I need to put on here before I can install it into the case. Now for the SSD, I decided to go with a 2 terabyte M.2, and since the maximum that my mother's board supports is PCIe 4.0, that's what I got. So when I was looking through the different available options, I pretty much narrowed it down to either this or the Crucial T500. And reading a lot of reviews, the, the T500 looked like it was going to be a lot faster than this. So I was just about to go for that, but then I noticed in the reviews that that extra speed boost was basically just in synthetic tests, but when they started getting to real world testing with just like booting programs, installing, processing, uh, video, and basically anything else that I'm gonna be doing, this was just as fast, uh, really only about a difference of 0 0.1 seconds in most situations, and on top of that, it's more power efficient and only uses maybe about 70% of the power that the T500 does. And on top of that, it's it was $30 cheaper at the time, so it seemed like kind of a no-brainer. So this motherboard has covers over all of the M.2 slots, but they did make them separate from each other, and since this is the main PCIe slot for the graphics card where I'll be installing that, I'll put the SSD up here, which is where the main drive should go anyway. And then it should still be pretty easy to access this panel whenever I may need to install more SSDs. This just has a couple screws holding it in place. Lift that off. And it looks like this has a thermal pad on it to help with cooling. There's also a little cover here that I need to remove. It's kind of interesting. Normally I just see a screw going into a stud. There's this little plastic piece here. I wonder if that helps to hold it down or something. Slip the SSD in. Nice. Oh, I see, I see. So instead of taking the screw out, you're just supposed to loosen it a bit, spin that around, and then tighten things down from the look of it. And that makes sense. So now that's in there nice and tight. So just remove that. There it is. Went around 
this way. Okay, SSD is installed. Now the last part to go directly on the motherboard will be the CPU water block. After looking around for a while, I decided on this one from Bixky, which is a Chinese brand that's a little bit new, but they've been putting out some good quality products from what I've seen. Some little bits of hardware, generic thermal paste. Let's see, cable for the light, backplate for the motherboard. And then of course the water block itself. So this is made of copper and it's uh, nickel plated with a very nice and shiny finish to the bottom. I'll have to peel that off, of course. And then for the top of it, this does have RGB lighting, but they also put this aluminum plate on there, so that helps it to be a little more subtle on the lighting effects than most of the RGB CPU water blocks that I've seen. Most of them are just clear and then have a whole bunch of lights shining straight up and out and all over, and it gets really, really bright, and to match the rest of my system, I wanted something that was just kind of good going to go around the edges and this seems like the right choice so that's a good heavy block there seems like it's really nice build quality and the uh, acrylic piece there is nicely milled out feels really smooth the metal parts are substantial and let's see more cable there for the rgb lighting just taking a quick look on the motherboard see how things are gonna go here So that sits right on the CPU, doesn't seem to be touching any other components, so that's good. One cooler installation I did on my other computer a while back, um, the uh, plate that touches the CPU, it came too close to the uh, capacitors and actually ended up resting on top of the capacitors. And then I had a really, really um, poor thermal conduction there and I almost overheated the computer. Noticed that quickly though, turned it off and figured out what went wrong. So I just wanted to make sure none of that was going to happen with any of these around there. And it looks like it's all going to be good. And to install that CPU block, first thing I'll do is just flip the motherboard over so I can put the back plate onto there. So the way they designed this, it fits either um, 1151 or 1700. So you just uh, snap these to the spacing that you need. So that's actually pretty nicely set up. Take those off and line it up and stick it down. It's staying on there. So flip that back over. Wipe that off real quick to make sure there are no dust particles. So now for the thermal paste, um, I was checking to see what they include, and I haven't seen anyone saying anything bad about the thermal paste that they provide, so I think it'll be perfectly fine to use. I don't know if they make it or if it is just a repackaged generic stuff, but either way, I've used generic paste before and had perfectly good results. This seems nice and fresh. It's squeezing on easily. Let me just peel that off now. Yeah, that looks really nicely finished. Place that on top. I like to kind of move things around a little bit just to help the paste spread out more. See how it is on there. Yeah. That'll do fine. So once I screw things down, it'll probably squeeze out from the edges a little bit. That's okay. Now for screwing that down, they provide two different sizes of screws. There's the larger M4s for the um, 2000 size sockets. And then the M3s for the 1151 and 1700. So that's what I need here. Four thumb screws 
four springs, and a whole bunch of plastic washers. When I saw in the instructions, I should only need one washer with each screw, so I don't know what all the extras are for. They don't show any more than four being used. Starting each one and then going diagonally. Now with all four of them in, just kind of tightening them down, making sure the pressure is nice and even. Right then, so there's the assembled motherboard. So now I can go ahead and get this installed into the case. I'll get the motherboard tray out of here first. Come on. Motherboard tray has mounting holes for up to the full size 12 by 13 server motherboards, but just the pre-installed um, standoffs they have here will line up with this motherboard, so I don't have to rearrange anything there this time. Just got to get it lined up. So I'll just start with the corners. I'm not tightening them down until all nine screws are in. Okay, and I'll have to take the uh, cover plate for the SSD back off for just a moment here. Didn't even notice that one of the uh, screw holes is covered by this. Okay, now I can tighten the rest of these. Okay, that is now mounted and ready to put in. Just about anyway. Peel this off first. Now on this one, the I.O. shield is built directly onto the motherboard, so I don't have to snap one of those in beforehand. Just have to line it up. Push things back. There. That looks right. Alright, that's all installed and looking good in there. Everything's fit nice and tight. It's all lined up the way it's supposed to be. And I'm going to leave those plastic films in place for now until I'm actually ready to get this thing powered up. Yeah, this has enough lights already that I don't think it's necessary for the motherboard to have its own. Those CPU and eventual GPU water blocks will be more than enough along with all those fans. So this just keeps looking better and better. And on the next video, I'll get to the water tubing installation, and I think I'll be able to power this thing up for the first time.